Hey guys, how's it going? It's James here, you're watching 30 Minute Gamer. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to tackle a problem that I know a lot of other guys uh, that play games have as well, which is one where you're sitting, staring at your Steam list or your Origin list, your PlayStation downloads list, and uh, you sit there looking at it thinking, I don't have anything to play. You know, you got a big backlog of games, but there's just nothing really floating your boat at that time. So when I have this happen, and it happens to me regularly, uh, I've got some backup games, or as I call them, my comfort games, uh, which are, you know, games I can just fall back on at any time. You know, I can drop in, play them for a few minutes, drop out, and move on with my day, you know. Or some of them, you know, I'll, I'll jump into them, and then I'll sit there for another 30, 40 minutes, or however long I can get to play them. Uh, so, uh, these games are basically, I'm thinking of them as, like, you know, an old pair of slippers or something, or, you know, chicken noodle soup in the winter's day, you know. It's just something that you jump into, and you're instantly there, you're having fun, you know. Uh, and all of these games, uh, they mean something different to me as well, you know. Uh, they'll uh, fire up old memories, you know, I'll get a real nostalgia kick from them. And uh, I'm going to cover five of the games that, uh, that are kind of classes my comfort games. I've got way more than five, but uh, just to keep the video kind of short, we'll, uh, we'll cover five of the games that... Uh, that I'm classing as my comfort games. And I might revisit this in a couple of weeks or so uh, and throw up some more of these comfort games. So uh, we'll share a little bit of gameplay and, uh, you know, what you guys see them. So, uh, and there's no particular order to this list as well. These are just five games. Uh, there's not going to be, you know, these aren't like the best games ever. These are just games that mean something to me. So uh, it's not by any means a best games list uh, in my opinion so that's a list for another day so uh, yeah let's get stuck in here we'll go see what games uh, float my boat when nothing else will <laughs> Hey guys, well first up on the list is uh, Outrun, uh, we're going to play the arcade version here and uh, I've been playing Outrun ever since I saw it in the arcades back in the 80s and I instantly fell in love with it when, uh, when I saw it and I've been playing it ever since. Uh, this is probably the, the oldest game we have in the list here today and it's, it's pretty hard to put my finger on why I love this game so much. Uh, it's uh, like a perfect mixture of the graphics, the sound, the controls, uh, you know, and the game still holds up for me today, you know, and like I said, the music as well is just sublime in this game, it's just, uh, you know, even if this soundtrack in the car doesn't last that long, but I'll happily uh, put it on loop, you know. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know anyone that dislikes this game or the music or, you know, it's just uh, everyone I mentioned Outrun to, everyone uh, as far as I've met anyway, they always have enjoyed this. So uh, I'm thinking I play this maybe once or twice a week easily uh, and I, I just play it via MAME uh, on the, uh, the PC, you know, it's for me it's just gaming gold. And uh, like I said, this is a real comfort game for me. I can just jump in, uh, enjoy it, you know, and then jump out. So, uh, and then the games are real quick as well, you know, depending on uh, how, uh, you know, how good I am on that specific day when I play it. Because sometimes I'll just blaze through this and I'll get a couple of stages finished. Sometimes I'll get all the way to the end of the, uh, the route I take. Uh, but every day, every time I play it, it's kind of different, you know, uh, and the, the alternating routes that you can take are uh, fantastic as well, so, just gives a bit of variety of the game, so, so, uh, yeah, first up on the list is Outrun!
So, number two on the list is uh, the Pro Evolution Soccer franchise. Uh, I've been playing Pro Evolution since the PlayStation 1 and I've stuck with it ever since. Uh, I'll still play some of the FIFA games, I love those as well, but the, uh, my heart belongs to Pro Evolution. I uh, know that if you've seen other videos on the channel, that you might get an idea of that. <laughs> Uh, and I've got some version of Pro Evolution on every console I own and all of the uh, the PCs that I have as well on my laptop. Uh, there is, on each of those devices, I've got, you know, a, there's a Master League or there's a Cups game save uh, or a regular League uh, game save. So any device I hop onto at home, uh, I can jump straight into a game. There's, and they're all different uh, game saves, obviously, as well. So... Uh, I don't always remember what uh, tournament I was involved in on each system, so you know I, I get a little surprise every now and again. <laughs> uh, but you know it's just fantastic though. I can just jump in at tournaments or stuff that's already in progress, and uh, the matches for me I set the timer to twenty minutes, but you know you can set that shorter as well if you need be. So uh, uh, you can drop in, get a quick match, and jump back at. Uh, and as I said, I'm not going to single a specific Pro Evolution uh, as my favourite because I can happily play any one of them at a moment's notice. Uh, and, you know, uh, to say uh, the ones I'm playing the most, though, are probably the ones on the PlayStation Portable, you know. My PSP does get played heavily, and when the kids are uh, hogging the TV, uh, it's nice to just fire up a quick game of Pro Evo, and even if I can't finish it, you know, I can put the uh, the console to sleep, and when I want to finish the game, I can just wake it up and just I'm right where I left it. You know, so uh, it's a really uh, sweet feature for me, uh, just because of the way I get to play games. So, so that was number two then, uh, the Pro Evo franchise. So, number three on the list is uh, NHL PA Hockey 93 on the Sega Mega Drive. So, uh, back in the day when I uh, first had my Mega Drive, I wasn't exactly uh, flush with cash. So, I wasn't able to buy games every week. It was, you know, kind of one a month if I was lucky. So, uh, when I did get my games, I tended to play them to death, which... Uh, you know, because I wasn't sure when my next game was going to be arriving, so I, I really got my money's worth out of the ones that I was buying. And NHL Hockey 93 was uh, one of those games that I just really got good value out of that. Uh, my brother and I, we would have great battles on this, and uh, we just uh, loved it so much, you know. It was just a fantastic game. It was fast-paced. Uh, you know, and those uh, body checks, they look just so sore, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, this game uh, for us had everything, you know, the, the controls, the speed, everything was just, uh, competition was just fantastic. Uh, I did try some of the newer NHL games, never really quite uh, got into those as much as I did with 93, but, you know, uh, I've got some of the more modern ones, like the PlayStation 3 and stuff like that, so... I might try them out and you might see some of them coming up on the channel at some point uh, if I can get into them. So, uh, yep, so there's number three, uh, NHL Hockey 93 on the Mega Drive. So, uh, next on the list at number four for me was uh, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Uh, this was the first game I'd actually played in the Super NES, as this was like a pack-in game. Uh, so the day I picked up my Super Nintendo, I had this and Super Smash TV. So two classic uh, games that <laughs> on day one. So that was a great start I had with the Super Nintendo. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I've never played a Mario game before this one. And from reading uh, like computer and video games and Mean Machines... Uh, before I got my Super Nintendo, uh, they were really hyping up Super Mario World as being like one of the best games ever. So you can imagine, uh, you know, uh, young James was getting pretty hyped for this, uh, and it didn't let me down though. You know, it was it ticked all the boxes. You know, and for my first introduction to a Mario game, couldn't really ask for a better one. Uh, 
and you know I've since gone back and played them uh, through the Wii and the Wii U via the uh, the eShop and you know I'll, I'll play them with my kids and we've actually just finished Mario World uh, about a month ago or so or so and uh, you know uh, Evan and I we had just a blast playing back through this so it was fantastic sharing that with him and uh, you know one of the real bonuses though uh, about playing them on the Wii U is uh, you know you can just sit and play them on the gamepad as well so if the TV's getting hogged as is I don't happen in my house with the kids uh, I can just sit and play it in the gamepad and the the screen on the gamepad if you haven't seen it is it's a really nice screen you know uh, and the Super Nintendo games just look fantastic on it so uh, I don't actually own a Super Nintendo at the minute but uh, I do plan on getting one sooner or later and Super Mario World's going to be like at the top of the list of uh, games to buy for it when I do uh, get another one uh, for me it's uh, almost as close to gaming perfection as you're going to get you know it just the sound, the music, the music's fantastic in this as well and uh, you know the, the controls are just fantastic it, it just really holds up well uh, today for me so uh, there you go that was number 4 on the list uh, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo So lastly uh, on the list, but by no means least, is uh, Red Racer on the PlayStation 1. Uh, this was the, the very first game I played in the PS1 and my jaw hit the floor uh, when I saw this. Because uh, I'd uh, played a lot of the arcade version, absolutely loved it, put I don't know how much money in it. Uh, but when I saw the PlayStation 1 version, uh, you know, my young eyes were convinced that it was arcade perfect and uh, it handled and played just fantastic, you know. Uh, but obviously, looking back, you can see clearly it's not quite as arcade perfect as I had uh, thought at the time. Uh, but the good news is it does retain like, the heart of the arcade game, you know, the uh, just the game is just so uh, it just feels right you know when you're playing it it just feels very much like the arcade version so uh, I can't I had no complaints uh, about the home version uh, and I had to track down the disc though for this one because uh, I don't think it was ever available in the PlayStation store I don't know if it was a licensing thing or something but uh, I've never seen it available for digital download uh, so uh, I can play it at least on my PlayStation 1, my 2 or my 3, you know, I've got the, uh, the disc will spin in all of them, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and I did uh, also rip the disc and convert it to an eBoot file so that I can play it in my PSP as well. Because uh, the Red Racer games that are available on the PSP, they're, they're fun, I enjoy them, but uh, there's nothing that... I like more than just a quick shot of Red Racer, you know. Uh, the gameplay is just so much quicker. Uh, and the laps are smaller. So, you know, you can get in and get out real quick on that. So, uh, so that's uh, number five on the, the list. Uh, Red Racer, the PlayStation 1. Well, guys, there you have it. That's uh, some of my uh, comfort games. As I said, I can put these on. Uh, at a moment's notice, get my uh, gaming fix, get in, get out, and move on with my day. Uh, and, you know, I'm hoping I'll be able to get over the kind of gaming slump that I'm in uh, and get through. Ow! <laughs> get through. <laughs> Son of a. Uh, so I'm just leaving that. And I can't. I too, too much editing going on here. So, so uh, as I was saying. Uh, I will uh, hopefully yeah, get over my gaming slump and get in with, uh, you know, get through my Steam list. Uh, I've got a lot of games in there that I have the best intentions of playing, but I just never actually seem to find the time. And it's, it's a common thing. Other people I speak to, you know, they're, they're the same problems, you know, they just, all those humble bundle sales, Steam sales, flash sales on PlayStation and uh, Xbox have similar sales as well. Uh, there's just too many games not enough hours in a day so uh, as I said though 
I'm delighted that I've got these fallback games so uh, uh, I hope you guys have some too and you know if you want to let me know what your uh, kind of comfort games are or your go to games if you're in a kind of little gaming slump you know let me know it'd be interesting to see what you guys are playing as well uh, when uh, nothing else is quite doing it for you so uh, hope you enjoyed my picks and uh, yeah thanks for stopping by and uh, we'll, you know we'll see you next time hopefully thanks <laughs>